Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities and Miniatures, and it's Friday, which means we bring to you yet another obscurity in literature, and this is a book that I'll admit took me a while to hunt down, and that is no other than Black Mark by Gil Kane. Uh, Gil Kane first came to my attention as a child with issues of Spider-Man and Conan uh, in the back issue bin. I had a cousin, I still have a cousin, who is quite the comic book collector, and so that's where I first became really aware of Gil Kane's work. But it wasn't because of him that I was familiar with Black Mark, and you'll notice on the cover here, this is the 30th anniversary edition. This book itself actually came out originally, believe it or not, in 1971 in a much smaller format. It was a typical paperback, but arguably this is one of the very first actual full-length graphic novels that was published uh, as as just that. So I had a hell of a time finding this, and you'll see I had to get it off of ABE Books. Um, finding a new copy was very difficult, so I have... Who do I have to thank? The Evanston Public Library, and why this book was withdrawn, I have no idea. Shame on them. I don't even know where Evanston is. It's been a while since this book was checked out. Let's put it that way. Man, I haven't seen one of these actual, like, stamps in a book in a long time. So, yeah, originally, like I said, 1971. Put out by Fanagraphics. Always the makers of fine and interesting stuff. So... This is a bit of a departure from the usual graphic novel, at least in the sense of the modern term. But then again, Gil Kane was not like a modern artist. I mean, he, he'd been around the block, even by 1971. Um, seen some stuff, did some stuff, but absolutely you can see there was that post-apocalyptic... Uh, I, I don't want to say like war in vain, but I mean... Obviously, he did do stuff with Warren, as far as I can recall. I know he was very prevalent in a lot of the DC books in the early and mid-70s. Um, you know, prior to this, he'd already been working on it. So what's interesting is, as the book is laid out, it's not your typical comic book format. You'll see there's long chunks of prose, but then it's actually more of an illustrated novel. And, you know, more in terms of the actual word, graphic novel, in that we have large pieces of prose and then kind of we have actual comic panels interspersing it. It's definitely unique. It's not a style that I've seen in quite some time, I must say. Gil Kane is one of those artists that I think people either tend to really enjoy or really not care about. Um, his style at times I think can be very angular. Um, when he was at his apex as an artist, uh, you know, he was competing with a lot of other very influential movers and shakers in the comic book and fine arts realm. So uh, his work, I think, often gets overlooked by the typical, you know, Kirby's and Storinkos and, you know, the more unique artists out there. But I think he definitely had a style unto his own. And if you ever spend significant time reading and flipping through old comic art, his style is very much his own and it's quite easy to identify. So like I said, we do have a bit of a post-apocalyptic vibe here. Uh, I really enjoyed the first half. So this is actually divided into two books and I'm not 100% sure and I never bothered to read the afterward. That might actually clarify a bit more. But the story is divided into two main sections. We have the early upbringing of Black Mark, and then we have the inevitable conquest and expansion of his realms. Because this is a very, I don't want to say tropey, but it is, a uh, typical by-the-numbers fantasy yarn. Not that there's anything wrong with that, necessarily. Uh, we have, you know, the men of science who are going to use their tools to put the, I don't know, lay the foundation and groundwork for the unborn child that doesn't even exist yet in our main character. He doesn't exist at the beginning. His mother, um, I guess, I, I don't know what they're doing, but it's, it's an interesting way of 
getting all of these fantastic powers granted to the main character without actually ever overstepping the rated PG boundaries, which is kind of funny because the book itself as a graphic novel, if you will, uh, was, I'm sure, much more marketed towards an older audience uh, with the scantily clad ladies, you know, bulging biceps, big swords. At least that would be my thought, but who knows. So as I said, the first half of the book, we, we get into the history of the main character, uh, strange birthmarks and sinister characters that come to greet him. And there's some interesting stuff that happens. And then, I hate to say it, but it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, it feels like, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was the first of what was to be a series of books. I don't know if it was a trilogy in the planning or whatnot. Uh, but there definitely are a few loose ends by the end of the entire production and uh, never get resolved, unfortunately. Like we see these things throughout the story and I'm not going to get into there, there. There's some revelations later on with them, but they don't really go anywhere. And for a Gil Kane story, I was quite disappointed that there weren't as many monsters. There's some here and there. We have the Psy Keep where the mutants and uh, evolved humans are living and plotting against all of the poor and destitute people meeking out a meager existence on what remains of what they call the New Earth. But like it's interesting how things play out. So like you can see here, there's a huge blocks of text as we have the battle with the fire lizard. And actually this fight goes on for quite a few pages before the lizard itself is finally done in. But uh, it's, it's just interesting how the text and the artwork play together. And it really reminds me of when I was in grade school, a friend of mine had this Flash Gordon book that he had found somewhere in our teacher's shelves of stuff that he probably should have had at school. The dude had a lot of comic books. I don't know why. He just did. But it was like, it was a, a novel similar in setup to this with like full on, very Alex Raymond esque pages of illustration you know, with huge blocks of text on it. And I searched and searched the shelves regularly and I never came across it and I have a sneaking suspicion that he just up and stole it. So James, if you're out there, I don't appreciate that. I always wanted to read it and you jacked it before I had a chance and you never shared it. Shame on you. That's okay. I forgive you. I have some of the old Alex Raymond strips, so I'm okay. This actually kind of reminds me of Flash Gordon. I don't know if it's just the, the, the fantasy sword and sandals type deal going on, you know, with the, the men of science trying to overcome the sheer barbaricism of the new future. I don't know, not like Mongo was all that, but well, it was kind of barbaric now that I think about it. I haven't read Flash Gordon in a while, so I'm flipping through. So you can see the first book itself is actually, what, 123 pages? Not a bad length. Book two, The Mind Demons. When I first came across Black Mark, it was actually in, I want to say like some old epic books. I don't remember if it was actually epic illustrated or not, but you'll notice that there's a lot more of the actual word balloons popping up here. You can see just some, some random Gil Kane monsters. I really dig the armor as well. Shades of Walt Simonson's art. And again, I always dug Simonson's stuff. And with the gray tones and the, just the, the use of the inks and the white space reminds me of when I was a kid. I, I know I keep going back to these stories of when I was a child. Uh, the old Be an Interplanetary Spy series of books. I was a huge fan of all the Choose Your Own Adventures type books that were so prevalent in the early and mid 80s. But the Choose Your Own Adventure, not Choose Your Own Adventure, the Be an Intergalactic Spy books in particular had a similar style. And I, I just always equated it with like, I don't know, like an Italian 80s comic art. But I don't know, Gil Kane kind of reminds me of that. 
So our hero goes through the typical trials and tribulations. And if anything, a lot of it kind of reminded me of the Conan movie. Uh, our hero sees bad stuff happen as his family is murdered and sold into slavery and grows powerful and, you know, breaks the shackles of his overseers and usurps the throne and all sorts of stuff like that. But then again, this came like 12 years before that. It's kind of cool. A few more random Gil Kane monsters as our heroes begin their siege at the end of the story. It feels like he knew he was having to wrap things up because we start getting a lot of these rather large pages and we have the, the final duel between the main baddie and the hero, which lasts a good, I don't know, almost 15 pages or so. Then we get into the afterward. I don't want to spoil things. And looking at the back cover, I always wish, you know what? It would have been really cool to actually see this in color. Kind of Kirby-esque with the colors and the armor as well. Just an interesting, funky book. Uh, it's not something we see or hear a lot about these days. Uh, I know Gil Kane has passed on a good 20-something years or so now. Uh, but, no, no, I always enjoyed his work, and it, it's fun finding books like this just to see how far things have come, but then again, how similar things have stayed. Uh, so if you're in the mood for tracking down old epic sword and sandal post-apocalyptic fantasy yarns like me here, uh, you're going to have to do some searching, because like I said, this book's been out of print. I had to hunt it down from an old library copy. Um, maybe you'll have better luck than me. I'll check Amazon if I can find a decent link that's not like exorbitant prices. We'll put a link down below and hopefully there you will find something as enjoyable as I have. With that said though, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon. Bye bye!